So last night's documentary on the wonderful wonders of Britain's far right community. If any one word kept coming back to my mind watching it, it was the word elite. Much of the video involved people having meals in restaurants that the average person could never afford to visit, particularly towards the end of the program where you had a collection of people clustered in a, a very high end restaurant with people trying to find out who this mysterious backer was and placing a, a phone call to Emil Kierkegaard or whatever he's calling himself this week. It did serve to show the kind of odd, strange individuals that cluster around people, the, these whole groups, since Emil Kierkegaard would merit a whole video and a very long one at that of his own with his ideas about legalising child pornography and incest to try and attempt to cut down on child abuse because obviously the people appearing in child abuse are not being abused in the Emil Kierkegaard world. Or he, I don't know what his plan is. Is his plan to show archive child abuse footage on the grounds that that's already happened? No, he doesn't seem to be able to see the ethical dilemmas of any of what he puts forward, I noticed. We also were treated to people rambling on about the need to reform organisations like the SS and a, a, a drunk, a rather drunken rambling conversation with somebody asking somebody about were they aware how the SS started with the implications of this conversation being that the SS would be used as a kind of governing body by the elite to control the public. This was a recurring theme. You had Paul Golding at one point going on about he desired the country to turn into, as he put it, basically, ship, and he actually used that word, so that because then he would have a ready-made market to recruit people for his organisations. Paul Golding is a known figure, though, and how seriously anyone takes him is a... Another point, his moment in the sun has passed, I think, some time ago. He made himself look like something of a fool several years ago. And I don't think he's a particularly influential figure in this that world. But some of the other figures that were shown are Eric Ahrens, who's a big name in German politics and is connected to the alternative for Deutschland. And I don't need to tell anybody about that part, his results in parts of uh, in certain areas and how it's gained seats. You know, and other figures who have major backing, and they seem content to sort of move the, the pawns and foot soldiers of these movements around. And the amount of Holocaust denial stuff was absolutely appalling, with people going on about fake genocides, um, people ranting and literally ranting and talking rubbish about the horrors of a, a memorial to the show here in London and that. But again, it was the word, it was a, a leak. That was the word that stuck in my head. Above all the racism, we had the idea that the working classes would serve as nice, handy little peons to manipulate and move around the streets and to wind up and like wind up soldiers and let loose by creating wedge issues and creating problems like that so that they wouldn't look at what these people were saying in any detail because they would play on natural frustrations with the state of the economy as it is and uh, austerity measures by various governments and cost the living crisis. It was a disturbing video and a disturbing look into an um, unpleasant world where these people, beyond their racism, also seem to have a view of the average person as merely a cog in their plans. The egocentrism and sort of almost boring megalomania some of these people was very, very disturbing to watch. It's been dismissed, of course, today by many of the figures who seem to be funded by Conru and who seem to be clustered around it, and they've tried to minimise it or they've tried to just overlook it and step, overstep it or just go on about wokey blokies or whatever. Some of them, um, and we all know one figure I'm thinking of, who are ardent Zionists, may wish to question why they are supporting an organisation which supports Holocaust denial and why they are funded by organisations which will fund Holocaust denials while they present themselves as a Zionist. That's problematic, and there are several other far-right figures like that who are ardently on the side of Israel but will be quite happy to associate with these people who, if matters proceeded far enough, would be quite happy to set up death camps and send Jews there again. 
I leave that to those individuals to sort out their cognitive dissonance and their bizarre contradictions. And the fact that they don't seem to be engaging in very joined up political thinking of any kind.